Jesus called the people to him again and said to them, Hear me, all of you, and understand. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. In the holy name of Jesus, amen. It's kind of an uncomfortable break that we had at the end of last week's gospel into this week's gospel for our Wednesday night service. If you remember, last time ended with uh, the traditions of man versus the tradition, or, or if you like, the commandments of God. Remember the assertion last week was, well did Isaiah prophesy of you hypocrites, as it is written, this people honors me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. In vain do they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandment of men. You leave the commandment of God and hold the tradition of men. If you remember, the tradition had to do with the washing of hands, right? And, of course, what were they dealing with? They were dealing with the external, the outward. And so they would do things like anoint their head, they would wash their hands, they would wash their feet, they would wear the appropriate clothing at the appropriate times. They had all sorts of rules and regulations about the outward appearance. And Jesus says, actually, those traditions, if they were given to illuminate God's own commandment, well and good, but they no longer were, they were almost slavish or dutiful obedience without recognizing maybe even the commandment that they originally were meant to illuminate. And so last week we talked about how the traditions of the church are meant to, to amplify or to uh, illuminate for us what God has given us, which is the preaching of his word, especially the word of absolution, the gospel. And then that gospel delivered through the washing of holy baptism and the food that is his body and blood in the supper. Those are the commandments of God, or if you even like the traditions of the apostles, not strictly speaking the traditions of men. And so then he tells them a parable, at least they call it a parable. There is nothing outside a person that by going into him can defile him, but the things that come out of a person are what defile him. <laughs> of course, then he goes into great detail about eating and how it doesn't defile you, it just goes into your heart. No, it doesn't go into your heart. It goes into your stomach and then it's expelled. Of course, uh, the children always like that part because they are just, well, Jesus is getting quite, quite bodily, um, even scatological, if you know what that word means. <laughs> of course, there he's declaring all foods clean. So the external does matter, according to Jesus, but not in the way that they thought it did. It's not simply a matter of wearing the right clothing or having the right ritual washings, whether it be hands or others or going through all the right motions, or being in the right place at the right time. Nor is it about eating the right foods, which is a whole other matter that were, they had many traditions regarding, some of which were actually given by God to Moses, Mount Sinai. Um, those are pictured on the front of your service folder, in the little image. You wonder, what are those pictures all about? Those are things that were forbidden for them to eat under Levitical law. So the, the squid, I think, is on there, and some others. Those were given by God, but they were timely. And now Jesus says, all foods are clean. So that's not the issue. It's not just washing of hands. It's not even the food that's being eaten. What is the external thing that does matter? <laughs> and here he talks about, again, as we heard last week, the heart. It's what's in the heart that matters. As we sang in our intro at Psalm, one that you probably know quite well, David's Psalm of of repentance, Psalm 51, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Why? Because out of the sinful heart come the things that defile a man. It's not what goes into the mouth. It's not what's on the hands. It's not even the clothing we wear or the motions that we make or even necessarily um, all the liturgical practices we have that defile us or make us clean either way. But it's actually what comes out of our hearts the problem, though, as I said, is that, well, as David confessed, we have sinful hearts by nature, from birth. And from those hearts come all the things that defile us. You probably understand this, actually. Um, when you say a, a hurtful word to someone you love, whether it's intentionally or if it just comes out, so to speak, the shame that you feel 
It's really a kind of uncleanness. It's a defilement. And so if you love the person, you'll quickly say, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. Please forgive me. You want that defilement to be, to be cleansed. And you're not dealing with, you don't need your mouth cleansed, although I think, uh, what was the old tradition with that with children? Oh, yes, putting the soap in the mouth, wash out their mouth. I only know that from the movies. I never experienced it, All right? Um, what was, oh, yes, a Christmas story, of course. That's not the kind of cleansing that needs to happen for us. What needs to happen is our hearts need to be cleansed. And all the ways that the heart is, um, is confessed in the Scripture, uh, it's also called the conscience, right? How we think of ourselves before God. That needs to be cleansed, needs to be made whole and clean um, and new again. The heart of stone that Ezekiel talks about needs to be replaced with a heart of flesh, one that's alive in faith toward God and love for neighbor. This is what Jesus is getting after. The traditions of men have kind of lost the point of what the externalities need to be. What needs to actually enter into the person, not simply into his mouth and into his stomach, because that just comes back out again, but rather the organ that he's most concerned about and that he hasn't talked about. It's not the hands, it's not the mouth, it's not the lips, it's not even the eyes. It's actually the ears. The external thing that is, that is most important for the Christian is the ear. Because within the ear is how you receive the word of God, the absolving word that gives you new and clean hearts, the preached word that declares you a child of God, the word that says as much in, the bapti- in your baptism. You need ears to hear, take, eat, this is my body, take, drink, this is my blood, given and shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. And that word into your ears goes into your heart and the Spirit comes alongside with that word, comes with the word, and creates in you not only new and clean hearts, but takes up his residence in your heart so that you believe and you trust in the word that's been put in your ears. And then, having new and clean hearts, from the heart then come not things that defile you, but things that make you holy and right and good. Not evil thoughts, but thoughts of God. That's only possible if the word is put into your ears and then into your heart. Uh, I heard a comment recently on a podcast, pastors talking to each other. Um, I listen to some like that as well as produce podcasts talking to other pastors. But uh, made an interesting comment where the, the pastor said that he wasn't confident that going to church once a week would actually do the job of remaining in the faith. That that hour or so each week that you hear God's word certainly is powerful and it does what it says and God promises and delivers all the things that you hear today. Your sins are forgiven. You are absolved. You are made God's child. You are, well, new and clean and whole again. That's all true. But what about tomorrow? Or the day after that? Or the day after that? And uh, of course, I felt affirmed hearing this um, because since COVID-19, we've had daily prayer um, online, not in person. It's not quite the same as being in person, but, but still an opportunity for us um, to, to do as a congregation what my family has been doing for about a decade or so, is to pray daily, to hear God's word each and every day, to say the creed and the prayer, right, um, and to ask questions of one another. What what, how do you understand it? What do you hear from Jesus today? And that will bear fruit, right? It will not only, it doesn't defile the heart because it's the word of God going into the ear and then the heart being made new again. And then where the heart is, there the treasure follows, including the words that are spoken. And thus we speak to one another um, in a Christian way. So we certainly are warned against um, the sort of things that come out of a sinful heart. It's quite the laundry list. Some of these things might sound familiar to you. Uh, sexual immorality. We know what that is. Theft, murder, adultery. You sound like the commandments, don't they? Coveting, 9 and 10. And then some others. Wickedness, deceit, sensuality. That's craving um, the dopamine hit, I suppose. Envy which is related to coveting, 
slander, speaking ill of our neighbor, pride, thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought, and of course, foolishness, as we've been discussing both from Ecclesiastes on Sunday, but now in our daily prayer, uh, wisdom, according to the Proverbs. These are evil things, and they come from within us. We don't have to learn about them. We actually already know them by our nature. And the only way to overcome them and to not be defiled by them is actually to have them forgiven, to have our heart made clean and new again through our ears and into the heart, not through the mouth and into the stomach. Although we do receive food, don't we, that goes into the mouth and makes us new and whole again, but it's because of the word that goes alongside that says, this is my body and this is my blood. Without the word, just bread and wine, but with the word of God, now the heart follows, the stomach actually follows the heart, believing that in Christ's body and blood we have forgiveness, life, and salvation. This is really different than the way most people think about um, shame and guilt and defilement. They think about it as the things that they do and the things that they say, which is true. And they think if they could only avoid those things, then they wouldn't be defiled. But Jesus says, actually, the problem goes far deeper into the very um, heart that we receive by nature from our mother and parents. And that's what needs to be corrected. Not simply just outward behavior, washing of hands, traditions to try to avoid sin, but rather to have our sins forgiven and to hear the word over and over, not only that our sins are forgiven, but God himself instructing us in what is good, right, and true in the way that we should go, um, encouraging us and actually even commanding us to flee wickedness and evil and bringing us again to his feet to hear from Jesus all that is, is right for us. And that doesn't defile us. That actually cleanses us. It makes us holy. It sanctifies us. And that work God is accomplishing now and accomplishes each day for you by his word and spirit. Thanks be to Jesus in his holy name. Amen. Amen. We stand to pray.